Hello, you are watching the latest edition of DBE TV News. We come to you every Friday at 12 p.m. on the DBE TV channel 122 on Open View and on BRICS TV channel 509 at 4.30 in the afternoon if you are a StarSet subscriber. Or you can watch it on the Department of Basic Education's YouTube channel. Welcome, my name is Tseho Hacho Moachi. The top stories this week. The Basic Education Department releases the Early Childhood Development Census report. Gauteng Education MEC Banyaza Lisufi receives the first report into allegations of racism at Hoor School Jan Fillion. Basic Education Minister Angie Mutecha launches Africa Month activities in Hamanskral. Deputy Minister Dr. Regina Mhaule speaks on various issues at a men and women dialogue in Mpumalanga. Limpopo Education MEC Poli Bushielo hands over the KK Munare Primary School to stakeholders and the community. And we head over to the Eastern Cape where a new school is being built and the province mourns the passing of two teachers. Let's start here. As the Basic Education Department assumes responsibilities of the Early Childhood Development Centres, Minister Angie Motecha has released the latest ECD census. Motecha reminded those in attendance about the importance of the census to gather as much reliable data and information as possible to be able to move towards a centralised information system which will enable the department to improve resources and allocation of oversight management of ECD centres. The findings with regards to learning through play indicate that South African ECD practitioners believe that the initiative for learning through play lies primarily with the practitioners themselves. Uh, part of the interview that we did with the um, ECD uh, principals was about learning through play and how they um, incorporate play in, in, in the daily programs. And one question was about how much time do you allocate to free, free play during the day, either as part of the daily program or when they play outdoor. And what we found is that roughly in each uh, instance, half of them allocate only 30 minutes or less to free play. And if you look at this by quintiles, you will see that the um, EC programs in the higher quintiles actually allocate more time for, to free play than the ones in the lower quintiles. We also found that about a third of them actually don't have access to an outdoor playground with suitable equipment. And only 56% have access to age appropriate books for different age groups. The more than that had access to books in general, but when you asked about specifically age appropriate books, uh, it's 56%. One interesting finding is when we looked at what play and learn materials were available and accessible at these ECD programs. Our field workers had basically a checklist of 20, 20 different types of toys and books and learning materials that they were trying to find in the ECD program. And what we found is that on average, um, ECD programs that were subsidized by um, DSD, we found 14 of these different types of um, uh, materials. Those were not subsidized by, by DSD, only had 11 on average. The census was carried out from August 2021 with over 42,000 early learning programs being counted that collectively had 1,660,316 children enrolled. So as a department, we are committed to continue to working closely with the sector, other arms of government, as I said, not on the social development, which works very well with us, with health, local government, as I said, I have to sell this to the Minister of Cocktail who really is also a very highly supportive uh, proponent of basic education and especially on issues and rights of children. So I'm going to comrade to, to Minister and Kosazana. Okay, I'm still in the mood of, of NC policy writing. So 
I'm in that space, so don't take any offense. So I will be speaking to her to say, colleague, I have this information, let's work on it. So I also want to thank, as I say, the civil society, the private sector to ensure that all children, including those children with disabilities are provided with quality access to ECD. Because the success of ECD sector will depend on our collective commitment to contribute to our country's plan of achieving universal access to quality ECD programs and services in our lifetime. Gauteng Education MEC Banyazali Sufi says he's happy with how things are progressing at World School Yan Filyun. The Sufi was speaking during the release of the preliminary report on findings at the school, which was presented by Luke Enslin, a representative of Specialized Security Services, a private investigative company hired by the school to investigate allegations of racism. The school was embroiled in a week of racism allegations in February after several videos of a brawl between black and white pupils went viral on social media. The recommendations made by the investigation team were that a disciplinary process against identified and newly identified learners proceed. He also strongly recommended that the school establishes a grievance committee to manage conflict. Other recommendations include the school implementing diversity programs and training. The Sufi says ill discipline at the school will not be tolerated. I want us to also to remove the element of race and bring the element of respect as well. You know, I'm told by the leadership of the school that since this incident, uh, there is a sudden increase of ill discipline in terms of respect where people need to be dragged to go back to class. So they feel they've been protected to do wrong things because we can't. Uh, uh, they must not respect the educators. They must behave the way they want to behave in the classroom. And that's the part that I want to emphasize that is not going to allow. We're not going to allow it. Because you allow that, that's the end of the school. Uh, and that is why the school feels that they need support in terms of managing that, that aspect. So the change management, diversity, and all other things, not only about race, but it's also how do we conduct ourselves uh, so that everyone can understand uh, 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 the issues that need to learn. After the break, we hear from Minister Angie Motecha on the importance of Africa Month and Africa Day, commemorated yearly on the 25th of May. Normally during the holidays we package, we know all our learners that are often uh, learners that are child-headed families, so we know them. So every time when we close the schools and then we package, small package each child so that we make sure that during the holiday they have something on the table. And sometimes we do deliver the food at their homes during the holiday, making sure that they get something during the holidays. It's actually one of the most successful because on a daily basis, we provide over 9 million learners nationwide on a daily basis. So for us, that is a proud, a proud program that we really want to, to take further and make sure that, you know, the learners are provided for in terms of their future. To the second chance matrix class of 2021, you are not alone, we are with you. We have prepared a revision program that is there to assist you fill in any gaps that you might be having, clarify any concepts that you might be confused on. Make sure that you do catch it on DBE TV channel 122. Check out our social media platforms for more information and some links to great resources that are there to also assist you. All the best. Basic Education Minister Angie Motecha led Africa Month activities at Hosea Gekana High School in Ramotse Village in Hamanskral. Africa Day is commemorated every year on the 25th of May and aims at recognizing and acknowledging the milestones achieved within the continent and the pivotal role played by the African Union in uniting the continent. Motecha emphasized the importance of learners knowing more about the day so they can talk about what it means to be an African. Our reporter, Robinson Ngola, has more. We are coming here to celebrate the month, but I really want to celebrate 
and commemorate Africa Day. But it's very important for us as Africans to talk about African, Africa Day so that we can talk about what it means to be an African. That's the message from the Basic Education Minister Njimu Teka during the launch of the Africa Month commemorations. The department says it's important to celebrate the small gains achieved during this month and to encourage people to take part in it, but also to understand what this month means for the continent. We are here because we want to promote the African identity amongst our communities. We want to celebrate the small gains and the small successes that we have achieved as government with our partners, stakeholders and community members in ensuring that we deal with all the structural factors that lead to poverty and that lead to our people not being able to participate fully in the, socio, in, in the economy and the socio-economic strata of the country. And we're saying that you, do, during this Africa month, we want to then say to our people that this is the time that we need to pull together and look at and reflect on what we have done and what more we still need to do so that we are able to then use small locations like Hammondsprawl to and start small fires in those small locations so that they then build up into a, an African continent that is prosper, prosperous but that is also resilient. She was joined by parents, learners, teachers and other stakeholders in the basic education sector including school governing bodies and teacher unions. National Association of School Governing Bodies says Africa Day is also a day for us. Because when you look exactly where we come from, prior to 1994, all our schools was run. And most of the people who were that side, they normally used to be called the school committee, but they can't read and write. Mararo, now we say, in this new era, our SGBs are doing tremendous job. We are under the roof that most of the people they will look at it as a whole. But due to the uh, hard work of the school governing body, will always support and will make sure that our learners are getting quality education, not just only education, but a quality one. Teacher Union Neptosa reminded those in attendance to be proud to be African and to start writing books that give a clear narrative of what it means to be an African. It is up to us as Africans to write our own books also, to write our own books, to do away with the history that has been written outside South Africa. You know, they say if you don't know who you are, people will tell you what you are not and you will believe that you are dead. So as Africans, we must find ourselves. We must find ourselves and take pride in these changes that the DBE is bringing. I would like to say, uh, uh, Minister, language is a gift that we give to our children. It connects the child with the tradition of the family. It connects the child with the people around, with the environment. So the first thing that a learner knows is home language. So therefore, I would like to say, let us take uh, heed of what we have already discussed with Minister in the other side, that uh, we need to recognize our languages and uh, let cry, we need to implement it so that people will be able to learn in their own languages. There have been many shocking incidents in schools recently of bullying and violence. The department is hoping that events such as Africa Day will encourage people to practice Ubuntu. What is most important it is to say, let's go back to the basics, which is Ubuntu. The philosophy that we as Africans believe in, caring for one another, supporting one another. We believe that with the moral decay that we see in our schools, this event is to come together and to say, let us all unite, let us all work together, let us all promote peace, let us all respect one another to ensure that the, the humanity 
is restored in our schools. Minister Motecha took the time to also speak about comprehensive sexuality education, urging learners to focus on their schooling careers. I spoke about comprehensive sexuality education. Then you can tell me how you because I am in Yeah? It was a day filled with various other activities as learners who didn't have IDs were given an opportunity by Home Affairs Department to get their documents. Uh, this week we are here in Gauteng province to ensure that everyone is registered with the birth certificate, registering the children that are born within uh, one day until 30 days, ensuring that they are documented having the birth certificate. And once more, we are having the children that are applying for their smart ID cards. We are here to ensure that they get their smart identity card because it is very important and crucial to have the identity with you. Uh, you must be identified what is your citizen? Where are you coming from? And as the Department of Home Affairs, it is our duty to ensure that all South Africans are registered in the National Population Register. That is why we are now taking these services closer to our people within the Houghton province. The IEC was also present at the school, encouraging those eligible to cast a ballot to register to vote. It is uh, important uh, that we come to events such as this so that we can get as many young people as possible to, um, to teach them about the importance of them registering. Because as you know, uh, by legislation, before a person can participate or vote, they have to first be registered. Um, so we are hoping to get young people to register because we have picked up as the IEC that uh, our young people are not participating. Even when we check on our voters' role, in terms of the youth, they are not uh, participating as they should. So we are hoping that um, uh, we will be able to up that number today uh, by getting those that are eligible to register to register um, obviously they will need to have a green bar coded south african id um, a smart card and a temporary identity cert uh, certificate in order to to be able to register however even though they are able to register at the age of 16 they can only participate um, they can only vote once they turn 18 years on Africa Day, various fallen heroes and heroines of our country and across the continent are acknowledged. It's a day also used to create a platform to promote unity, peace, national identity and building a cohesive society. Robinson Mola, reporting for DBE TV News in Hamanskra. To this now, Basic Education Deputy Minister Dr. Regina Mahaule has urged mothers and fathers to always show their children love. Dr. Mahaule was speaking at the hashtag face to face men and women dialogue in Mbombela in Mpumalanga. The dialogue, organized by Lisango Lamadzota in partnership with Mpumalanga Moral Regeneration and the Office of the Speaker Mbombela Municipality, was aimed at addressing the scourge of gender based violence and femicide. The organizers engaged with men and women on how to prevent and end gender based violence and femicide. There's a point that was made 
of love, like that they call love. When I was so rigid, so I should be like, cool, I should be like, I do respect it to an extent that you can't hug your girl. So I'm begging my, I can't hug your girl. My girl, your own daughter, I can't hug. You are a father. I'm sorry, my nose are not in Kurumaga. You are a father. And Unika's little daughter, Unika's own fans. When you hug your girl, we'll feel that thing. As a woman, you have a baba. Likichi Mikas. I didn't enjoy it. Go, Magan Hagat. You have another joy that blood will that flow. And I told you for the first time outside. No, Magai told him when you sugar did. I think that's a feeling like this. And this is body. Feel like this body is fresh. It has its own language. Even your father, Magak Haka, you will feel this blood. And it will activate your blood. Ubaba. And we are trying to do an agai associating a sex. We associate an woman to have a wab. Magas will have a woman from outside. I know the feeling. It's not you. And it won't change anything like you. And the massacres of bees and Baba Lobuti, let's go for sex. Uh -uh. My father hugs me and I feel the same thing and they never called me for sex. She went on to speak about the importance of comprehensive sexuality education in schools. The sexuality education has always been there. Uguti wanted to enhance it in such a way that a boy child will understand his body and the body of a woman and start respecting a woman. And the woman must know his her body and the body of a boy so that they understand and will teach them even the reactions of the bodies when they are brought together so that they understand. When you work, it's then that you can do it. But now, focus on your studies. That's what we are doing as the Department of Education. Stay tuned. When we return, we head to the Limpopo and the Eastern Cape. I am a nurturer, like you. The real men stand against gender-based violence. I get hurt, like you. If I am a victim of violence, I too will not be ashamed to report violence and abuse. I hate it when someone violates me, like you. In a violent situation, there is power in walking away. I will not take part in fights at school. All I want is to feel safe, to feel loved, and to be free to show love. Like you. I cry when I'm hurt, because to feel is to be human. I pledge to be more open about my emotions. Make it part of the new normal for young boys to be nurtured and loved, to freely express themselves, and to show love in a safe, inclusive way. We have different gender identities, but first, we are human. If you need assistance to help your child, contact Childline on 08000 555. Limpopo Education MEC Poli Bushielo has officially handed over the KK Munare Primary School to stakeholders and the community. The school, situated at the Mohalakwena Education District, has 10 classrooms, a grade R facility, 16 Enviro toilets, a fence, guardhouse, borehole, and a nutrition center. The mission of the school is to provide learners with skills that prepare them for the future, to produce learners who can read and write with understanding by fostering an enthusiastic, creative community of learners prepared to continue the intellectual, emotional, and physical development. The school also aims to produce learners who will be responsible and caring citizens. Heading over now to the Eastern Cape, where the Education Department is mourning the loss of two teachers from Gweza High School who were brutally killed. It's understood a gunman fired shots at a vehicle the teachers were traveling in from a grade 12 revision camp held in the evening at the school on Wednesday, the 11th of May. The driver of the vehicle tried to escape, but the gunman continued firing shots. The victims eventually managed to escape and were rushed to hospital. One of the teachers with critical injuries succumbed to the injuries a day later. 
A case of murder has been opened with police and the department has activated psychosocial support for all the affected teachers and learners. The Provincial Education MEC Fundile Gade has visited the teachers' families to pass his condolences and has urged the police to work hard to get the perpetrators. What we needed uh, from our own side is to consolidate the community safety uh, concept and program and also the school safety so that we can be able to secure the lives of the, of the teachers and uh, the lives of the learners and uh, ensure that things of this nature doesn't happen again in the province. I have been observing this for the past six months because we have been in Kaftuini uh, in the past three weeks. Same incident in as much as it didn't affect teachers there, but to have 22 people being killed it indicates a, a, a syndicate coordinated crime which in my view in the province would have to be dealt with once and for all. Otherwise, if we don't, uh, we'll have a crisis because once there is no community safety, you are likely not to have a schooling system in the province that is stabilized. So that is why I am here today to ensure that uh, there, is, there is comfort to the teachers, comfort to the learners. Uh, the government is taking care of everything and will ensure that everyone is taken into book on these particular matters. Staying in that province, good news for the learners and the community of Idujwa. A new structure for JS Skenjana Senior Secondary School is currently being built all thanks to Sibanya Stillwater. The school, which is one of the best performing schools in the district, will have 32 classrooms and will be able to enroll more than 1,500 learners. It is expected to be completed in August and then handed over to the community shortly thereafter. That's how we end this bulletin this week on Channel 122 on Open View on YouTube and on Briggs TV Channel 509 Starset. Before we go, please ensure that all children of school going age go to school. Thank you for watching. Thank you.